big things are happening with the Euro slash US dollar pair. First off, read this disclaimer carefully. Okay, we are going into the Forex market. Uh, the most liquid market on the planet. So the Euro slash US dollar. Okay. Distance from 52 week low and 52 week uh, high. Let's also a bit quickly look at uh, the Zeitgeists. So let's actually compare the S&P 500 vis-a-vis -vis the average performance of the uh, Zeitgeists. To get some idea of uh, performance. I know it is pretty big outperformance, but it is actually quite significant when we get um, the percentages. Oops, like uh, that. Yeah, so over three times out uh, performance. Uh, a key thing to remember about these themes is that I put you know, stocks that fit into the theme and I I'm not like actively like moving positions in and out here. So uh, let's look at space exploration, pretty good performance as an example. You can see here that some are obviously performing really well, like uh, Maxar Technologies, um, Laurel Space and Communication, not too bad, Virgin Galactic, but you see like Micro Pack Industries, this is relatively weak performance. Airbus is very far far away from the 52 week high, but the reason why they are in this theme is because, well, they have to do with space exploration. Hence, if you were to pick the best winners within these themes, then your performance could be uh, far above 206% uh, from the... I mean... Yeah. And also, if you were to be like long during the bullish phase, uh, short during uh, a declining cycle, then it could... I mean, basically, basically, even though this number here is impressive, it could actually be far more impressive. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's first let's look at the seasonality here of the euro slash US dollar. Uh, we are currently in July. 50-50. Um, Throughout this entire period, uh, this is the percentage of months in which uh, the euro closes... I mean, euro slash US dollar, basically where, when the euro uh, strengthens. So basically, it's, it's just in the middle. Very hard to draw any firm conclusions based on this current period. Okay, here we have the weekly data points, and we go way back here to 1995. Here you can see the euro weakening quite dramatically um, during you know the dot com bubble. Well, heading into the dot com bubble, then a supreme rally. Heading into the financial crisis, and then ever since then we have seen that euro has been in a very solid downtrend. It's weakened against the U.S. dollar all the way to this low here, that's minus 35%, which is pretty substantial in the forex market. Something that is very important to be aware of, if you look like at hundreds of years of history, Euro, Europe, the European uh, countries in the European Union have been um, the superpowers throughout most of Earth's history. And quite, you could argue very strongly that th those European empires managed the world uh, better than the current American empire. Hence, America has far less experience and success being world ruler than Europe. 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 And meaning, I am actually quite bullish uh, long term on Europe. I do think that uh, if, because a lot of people are looking to like to like China that oh China is going to be the, the next superpower, I would be a bit contrarian. I do think that we will go towards a multipolar world, but I do think that you should not underestimate Europe, especially given the legitimacy Europe has. Everyone wants to move to Europe. People in Asia, people in Africa, people in the Middle East, people love Europe and the European system. It has legitimacy. And that's something that is actually very powerful, more powerful than all the money and the military forces that America has. Legitimacy is the most essential thing. We are seeing here, looking at the more you know smaller picture, because now we were like uh, galaxy brain, uh, hundreds of years of history, hundreds of years of history. Okay, so looking at these data points, we are seeing, you could make a case that the bottom has been formed, seems like that. Interestingly, 
you can see here that the red 200 week moving average has been a negative for, well, it's been, well, it's not been negative throughout, but it's been in a declining pattern for a long period, many years. Now something has changed. It has smoothing out, been smoothing out for a longer period than it's been uh, throughout this uh, downfall. And now it is starting to show some positive uh, movement. On top of that, we have a clear breakout. So this week, this candlestick, the euro strengthened significantly against the US dollar and we broke out above the red 200 week moving average. You can see here with these uh, data points that we have very actively been testing and challenging that moving average as support and resistance, and it is a big deal. The week is not over, but if we are able to close above here, this, it could become a self-reinforcing effect. Which would of course you not know, be bullish for the Euro. It's so very interesting. The correlation with S&P 500 is minus 53%, so there's negative correlation. Uh, basically this looks like a rounding bottom uh, pattern. A longer term a shift in favor of uh, the Euro. Um, yeah. Let's look at the daily data points. Moving averages need to be loaded, like that. Here you can see we did get a golden cross here. Um, we have to go all the way back here actually to uh, June 2018 to get the death cross. We did the 50 day moving average crossing below the 200 day. Because it's such a long time since, that, since we've had uh, the crossover, that means that this move actually matters more because if we had like a bunch of fail moves then the algorithms and other kinds of technical systems they would weight this move less because there's been uh, fake outs before but this becomes more profound this is a major change not only that a few days afterwards you have the 100 day crossing above the 200 day and you know, this, this, is, this is a very interesting uh, move as far as the RSI goes, we did have a bit of a breakout, then a cool down, and then we are rallying again. Uh, so we are some distance uh, distance away from becoming overbought. Not at that much distance. If you look at the history here, it doesn't like to become overbought or oversold. So that's something to just be aware of. But overall, uh, this is um, quite clearly in favor of uh, the bulls. Even though, even though there, there's certainly the possibility of uh, some pullback before uh, a bigger move upwards. Simply because uh, that's how this uh, PR moves. You see, see quite clearly that there are these uh, cycles. Okay. Yeah, so th that's uh, some of the moves uh, happening here. Uh, on the daily data points, uh, there's a 36% correlation with the S&P 500 actually positive. As far as the bigger picture move I was talking about in favor of Europe uh, as a global and economic uh, power, that is looking uh, like many years into the future, like multiple years and decades, until I think that uh, we will see a strong resurgence uh, of Europe. But uh, yes, I, I actually do think that the future superpower of the world will actually be Europe. It could be a reformed European Union. It could even be a European Union uh, that uh, includes Eastern Europe. Because if, the, if West Europe and East Europe were united uh, as one um, major super country, then it would be the most powerful uh, country on the entire planet. And that's with the current, uh, current data. Here you can see actually countries, list of countries by GDP nominal. So you can see that the European is actually, it is pretty close already to the United States. Uh, and if we w you were to include, you know, the um, Eastern, uh, the entire uh, East uh, Europe, like Russia and uh, you know, some of the others, then uh, European Union would be bigger than USA. And it would be a region with far more history of successful management of the planet than USA. I think that there's huge legitimacy issues when it comes to USA as a world ruler. There's multiple reasons for that. Um, there's been many, many failed uh, wars. Uh, hence, there is an issue of legitimacy for sure. 
As far as culture, what is the culture of USA? What is the culture? I mean, there is very little depth there. While Europe has a very deep and serious uh, history. Yeah. Uh, by the way, of course, I am Norwegian, so I do have some w vested interest here. But, uh, you know, it's something to think about. Okay, so let's look at some other markets. Uh, this is the S&P 500 futures. Uh, today, we are seeing some rally here in um, in the market. Um, we are still stuck, though, in this massive consolidation. Here is the roof, here is the floor. The, the saying is that the longer you go sideways, the bigger the breakout. So it begs the question, will, will the breakout be to the upside or to the downside? Currently the bulls have um, the, the upper hand. It's been quite some time since we've had some exploration of the lower part of the channel. And that's the S&P 500. What I find more interesting now is actually the Nasdaq, because the Nasdaq is sort of like the poster child of the super rally we had after the low. This one has not seen, you know, even, even a sideways uh, correction. Because you could, of course, correct it downwards or sideways. Here we are seeing this fatigue. This is a massive fatigue candle we got. Um, hence, it has been working out as a short selling opportunity as of late. We are very, very due a, a correction. Um, but whenever... Whenever you are trading, of course, you want to let the trend be your friend. Hence, if you are short the Nasdaq, you have to have a stop level uh, that uh, maybe even is a trailing stop, meaning let's say that you shorted Nasdaq uh, like here, then this stop level would sort of like follow the price. Hence, if we were to get a rally, you would be stopped out and be able to keep your profits. Uh, given that we are seeing some rally uh, today uh, in the futures, um, there could be some um, some rally also, of course, in the Nasdaq. We are seeing that uh, in the Nasdaq futures uh, so far. Then again, uh, the reason why I have a bit more of a bearish bias uh, at the moment is because the move has just been so unprecedented. And when you look at you know the single stocks like the Amazons, uh, the Teslas, the Netflixes. Microsoft's um, the big components of the Nasdaq, they have had moves that are just statistically highly improbable. Uh, they're not really supposed to happen. And when you have a massive uh, distortion in one direction, it makes more sense to start to think as a contrarian than to think that um, we are even go going into less probable uh, numbers. To use a simple comparison, okay. So let's say that you are at the mall, and then you see a, see, a, see some very tall people entering the building, okay? And then you see an, some other very tall people as well. And um, then you start to ask yourself, okay, what is the probability that there's going to be even more abnormally super tall, even taller people entering? Uh, the probability is very low. Statistically, you know, you as an, as an observationist, as you know, a scientifically minded person, it doesn't make sense. The probability as to you will see people who are of more average height. At least you will not see people that are even taller. And it's sort of like that's the logic here. And it's something to think about. Which I, which is why I think that um, we just need just the basic correction, just something normal. Okay, whatever you do, of course, uh, don't fight the trend. That's all, of course, very important, even though I have these ideas and uh, made the trend be with you.